Hey, we are live with the one and only Mr. Paul Hutchinson. Paul, I'm so grateful to be live with you again. It's Thank amazing. You, Thank you, Ken. You were you're actually my first podcast that I did after being undercover for 10 years and uh, no social media, nothing for that time and deciding to come out with the, the stories of the rescues, et cetera. You were the first one. And now millions of people have uh, have seen the different uh, stories. In fact, just last week, I have a, a TikTok video that hit 1.5 million views in like three or four days. Wow. So there's a, there's a lot of people that are that are wanting to be a part of this movement in helping to eradicate child trafficking. What you're, and I want to help people who sign on and watch us tonight, want to help them kind of get an, an idea of um, where this all started, because you, you've not always been in, in this end of the world. you you are, um, and trust me, I, I met Craig Shaw the other day. I was actually in a business meeting with another partner of his, Vinny Chopra, and and Craig's like said something about I, I want to introduce you to my friend Paul Hutchinson. I said, dude, I know him better than you do. <laughs> <laughs> he said, What you know, Paul? And I said, I know Paul. So it was just kind of funny, man. You're your name is huge in that arena. Um, so you've been in the, um, you were in the real estate and all kinds of financial stuff. Talk a little bit about kind of where you started before you got into this movement. Absolutely. Well, I somewhat of serially on serial entrepreneur. <laughs> I yeah. Was, yeah. I, uh, I've had a whole bunch of successful companies. Um, my favorite of my companies was one of my early 20s where we help people overcome anxiety and depression by helping them change their their thought pro processes and and had over 50,000 people a month calling in off of our infomercial wow. to get a, a, a cognitive restructuring program to help them think differently and feel differently and uh, sold that company when I was 29 years old did, did pretty well with that and then started investing in real estate ended up building a pretty successful real estate investment fund. John Pennington and myself co-founded that fund and uh, brought on some partners who had lots of history and, and managing apartments and whatnot. And now it's $48.8 billion in assets under management. Now that's not the value of the company. That's the AUM. You know, we yeah. went public at a few billion and whatnot, but uh, it's, it's been a beautiful road and I retired completely in 2017, took my name off of all the board of directors and everything so that I could focus full time in doing undercover work in uh, helping to identify and rescue the kidnapped and trafficked children. Absolutely unbelievable. And, and, and so when I had you on um, the podcast, you talked about the, you got a phone call one day um, talk about and that's when you're you're mr you know shaker and mover not that you're not still but, <laughs> well, you know, wasn't you're... the phone call i got was uh, from our attorney general and we were we were kind of you know i i was building the fund he was running for office and and we were at every single fundraiser together for years that sometimes people thought we were there together you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that was, we were we were at so many events together and and what it was is is i had met him at uh, uh some training that we were doing with the fbi many many years ago and um we were both i i was 40 under 41 year that's 40 most influential people under 40 years old he was the the, the next year he was the young attorney of the year for the entire country so we we're pretty tight and um he knew the amount of money and time that i put into child related charities he knew i was on the the board of directors for make a wish in the area at the time etc and he called me and he said paul he said i um need to talk to you about something he says it's pretty dark he says it's the the fastest growing criminal enterprise in the world and good people don't even know that it's happening and I said, well, what do you mean? What, what is it? He says it's child, it's, it's human trafficking. He said, and, and then specifically, he said, I want to talk to you about child trafficking. I'm like, like children being sold, like, like 
like labor camps and organ I mean, what? He goes, no, this is sex trafficking. I, I'm like, what? What? People, people are buying children for, for what? And he said, wow. yeah, he said, this is, he said, there's more today. I, he said, I'm not talking about just children being abused at home, which is horrible and a huge problem. And we'll talk about that later. But he said, I'm talking about sold human beings more today than all 300 years of the transatlantic slave trade put together. He mm -hmm. said, and now at the night, I didn't go into details before on this with you, but I'll tell you. So I was I, about once a month or so, we had a guy's movie night. And one of my friends was uh, a founder of a company that sold to Adobe for like $1.5 billion. And he had this gorgeous uh, theater that, you know, he had like gold wiring and it was like thousand dollars a foot. I mean, it's crazy, right? Wow. So we, we had the a guys only movie night and our, our rule was no pitches, just come and, and there was who's who type people there, but, but nobody was pitching anything. We we're all just enjoying each other's company. And Sean's like, hey, uh, this, uh, this Homeland Security guy uh, that's doing some stuff in Columbia, he's in town and I want to bring him to that movie night you're doing. I'm like, Sean, no. We can't, we can't, no pitches, nothing. He goes, Paul, I promise you this is different. I said, no, I, I'm making the guys a promise. We won't pitch anything to them ever. He goes, just this one time, just this one time. So sure enough, I, I let him bring uh, this Homeland Security agent over. And uh, he's the same guy that Jim Caviezel actually plays in the movie, wow. The Sound of Freedom. So he comes over and he's, uh, we watch the movie and then he stands up on stage at the end. Was, you know, home theater with a stage. Home. Uh, you said home. <laughs> home theater hey. the stage, right? <laughs> so wow. he's up on the stage at the end and he starts talking about these children that he found in Colombia, about 20 children in Cartagena. And he was, he was Homeland Security, he was CIA before that. And he was just right at that brink of wanting to, he, he had quit his job. He, he was trying to raise the money to, to, to help to fund this because Homeland Security his boss wouldn't give him the money or the authorization to do so. He said, you know, that's Columbia's problem. It's not ours. And um, so he starts talking about these kids and I'm thinking, and he needed like $50,000 to go do this operation to rescue these children. And I'm sitting here thinking, I'm, I'm sitting there in this, this theater. I'm thinking, okay, 50 grand. And for me, you know, I was on the Make-A-Wish board. $10,000 with Make-A-Wish, we could we send a little girl to Disneyland for a week with her family, which is important. Yeah. She's yeah. she's struggling with cancer. It's a life-changing opportunity for her to, to go do this. But, you know, five times that, $50,000, we could pull 20 children out of hell and get them back to their families. I, I just, I, 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 I was thinking to myself, I thought, okay, if I had a 9, 10, 11-year-old girl and... If I had to pick some horrible way for her to have to deal with some stuff, would, would I rather have her laying in a bed in my home filled with love and peace, dealing with cancer or whatever, or whether I, would I have her taken and being in Colombia and being sold to strangers for sex? Wow. I, thought, I thought, you know what, of all the charities on the planet, there was nothing that I could think of that, that was more horrible that I wanted to put my effort into to help fix. Mm. And so so I, I said, hell yeah, I'll help. What do we need to do? And myself, some of the guys, uh, Glenn Beck, um, he's a good man, helped with some of the things in the beginning. And then I get a phone call a little bit later. It was from this Homeland Security agent. He's, he's in Colombia. And the, the story of the Sound of Freedom kind of starts out with him being in in uh, his job, CIA Homeland Security, and then leaving, and then finding these kids, and and uh, and then need somebody to fund it, and need somebody to uh, play this role. And so he calls me up, and he said, "Paul," he said, "I'm I'm here in Cartagena." He said, "There's not just twenty children here." He said, "There's for sure more than 50. He said, we found this trafficker here who's got this, this island that he inherited from his mother and he wants to build it out and develop it to do a child brothel sex resort. He's got like 14 children of his own that, uh, that he was selling, that, that he was controlling, and then he had access to all these other traffickers. He said, he said there's, a, there's a lady down here. She, she was a beauty queen. 
And she's got this fake modeling agency and she's going around to towns in South America and she's telling the parents, oh, your daughter's too pretty to be working the field. She should be a model. And she's bringing them into this fake modeling gig that they have going. And the parents would take them to a photo shoot and boom, the kids would disappear. And they were brought into, this is, this is, you'll see all of this in the movie, this stuff, what really happened. And I, 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 and I said, he said, okay. And I think that there's not only 50 children here. He said, there's more than a hundred children in other trafficking rings that if we take down this one by itself, those guys are going to hear about it because they're all connected. And, and then we won't be able to rescue those kids. He says, so we have to do them all three on the same day at the same time. And, and he said, I believe we can rescue all of them, but I need your help in a, in a big way. And I, I answered him. I said, well, how much do you need? Cause I thought that he needed money. Let's write a check. Yeah. I, I mean, rescue a hundred kids. Yeah. yeah and, right. Uh, you know, a little side note, I, I was doing a calculation today. I was going through all of the different operations. I've, I've led or been a key part of over 70 undercover rescue missions in, in, um, wow. in 15 countries. And I was looking at the one that we did in Haiti. Here's what was a miracle, Ken. 34 children were rescued on that mission. I calculated how much money I had put in to paying for the all of the, the flights, the security, myself yeah. going in, the tips of the traffickers. It made me cry when I saw it. My personal donation to making that happen, besides me going in eight different times and finding those kids, my personal donation was $34,000. So for me personally, a thousand dollars per child bought their freedom. Wow! And so, so now the average cost of an operation is somewhere between a little over two thousand dollars. But that was my personal investment, and wow. it just brought tears to my eyes how serendipitous it was. Wow! That that I had invested thirty four thousand on a rescue that rescued thirty four children. So back up to my my first wow. experience ten years ago. Tim said I. I said, how much do you need? And I, 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 I was waiting for a number, a hundred thousand, two hundred. I mean, what do you need? I, I had a, my company. We had about two billion dollars in assets under management. I had made a commitment to God and myself and the world in my early twenties that I would donate twenty percent of everything that I made to yeah. charity, to making a difference in the lives of others in some way. And, and, and so I, oh. I, um, I, I, I had what was needed to fund that, but he, he said, Paul, I don't need the money. He said, we do need some, <laughs> he said, <laughs> yeah. he said, yeah. but more important than that, I need, I need you. If you're willing, I said, what do you mean? You need me. He said, I have to find somebody who can play a role, play the role of a wealthy real estate investor, which I fit it, you know? Right, right. <laughs> he said, a wealthy real estate investor who, who is going to come down here and tell these traffickers that he's willing to invest in their project. He said, the idea is this. We tell them that you're willing to spend the $8 million to build out their child brothel sex resort. They wanted to build something like a Jeffrey Epstein Island, right? Oh my God. They, they felt like they could make tens of millions of dollars a year on this, this project. And wow. so the, the plan was I fly in and here's the crazy thing. I didn't tell this very often. I don't know if I told it on my first podcast with you. We didn't have time to set up a fake profile for Paul Black, Paul Stone, Paul Steele, all my other fake profiles. I had two days. Can I went in to Columbia wow. as Paul Hutchinson, right? Tim, Tim went online and showed them my fund. He showed them the, the, the background that I had and the Facebook and everything else at the time. And they're like, whoa, yeah, this guy could for sure fund it. And so I went in and I sat down. I, I, I flew into Cartagena, Columbia. Wow. They have this, this little restaurant that, that's up high and overlooking the beach. And, uh, and I have two bodyguards. They're, 
they're Navy SEALs. They're the, my real bodyguards and my show bodyguards, right? We yeah. got a bulletproof car, like level five glass. I mean, heavy duty, cool stuff. And it pulls in on the beach side and you can see these guys looking over the top, you know, looking down and it was all show. The uh, Navy SEALs get out. They're all looking around, you know, making sure that everything is good. Then they take me out and upstairs and these guys are pissing themselves. They're like, oh, holy crap, this guy's going to make our whole world come true, you know? And I sit wow. down, I, I give the, this, uh, this female trafficker a hug and a kiss on the cheek, and, and uh, we sit down, and these guys start presenting their plan. He, he has this piece of property, this island. He has all of these children. He shows me how much money he's making on the children already. What their plan was is that they they were going to charge a hundred thousand dollars per person for each American or foreigner wealthy guys hundred thousand dollar membership fee, just for the membership, and then he would come in and pay X number of thousands ten thousand dollars a week, and then he would pay extras for special upgrades. <clears throat> I'm going to interrupt for a second because I still, to this moment, even though when you were on my show, you said, we talked about what I'm getting ready to bring up. I find it absolutely mind boggling that there is a market big enough, like that there's a market period, but there's a big enough market to see profitability at a hundred thousand per person membership. Well, and here's what's crazy about that. This market is so big that last year it made more money than all of the airlines on the planet combined. Combined. So here's, here's where it's coming from. And so that's really what created my transformation in the last six months. Wow. At the end of that rescue mission, and you'll you'll see it on the on the film. Now we took four or five different rescues and put them all together in the same script. And there's a lot of unsung heroes that weren't on there that that contributed in some great ways. But we we put all of these together in just the few characters that we had. But everything really did happen. And so for the last ten years, me thinking I want to fix this, I'm thinking that going undercover and pulling the kids out is going to do it. And yes, it made a massive impact in the lives of those children. In, in countries all around the world. Time and time and time again, went in with my team to find the kids, would bring them out. The uh, Homeland, former Homeland Security guy would come in with cameras at the end and he would film everything that we, that we were doing and tell the story because we needed somebody to tell the story, somebody to go out there and, and, and show what was happening in these horrible situations. And so the last six months though, I took a step back and I'm like, okay, if my lifetime goal is to eradicate this problem. How am I doing? How's our team doing? How's our foundation doing? What are we doing to, to make a difference? And I realized that 10 years ago, there was roughly 8 million children being sold for sex. Average age of 12 years old when they were brought into it. And today there was over 10 million. So the number was getting significantly bigger. And I thought, am I failing? Are we failing everything that we're doing? What needs to happen? What needs to happen? And I, I thought, okay, here's the problem. Every single time we go in and pull 20 children out of hell, if not enough was being done to fix the supply side, another 20 children were being sucked, being traumatized as we're trying to heal the trauma of the other ones. And I'm wow. thinking, oh man, are we making the problem worse? What's going on here? And so, so I, I took a step back and I said, okay, where is it coming from? Where is it coming from? And for a long time, I thought that the demand came from hardcore pornography addiction, where, you know, when somebody gets addicted to, to, to hard pornography and he, 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 he wants something harder to have that same fix because it's like a drug and something harder is maybe rape videos or something, you know, gross or Wow. Harder is a little bit younger, a little bit younger. Pretty soon they're fantasizing about something they wouldn't have even thought was attractive five years ago. And then they're acting out on these horrific fantasies. I've now come to an understanding, Ken, that even that is a symptom of a deeper problem. And here's where all of us 
can work on this, okay? Here's where the numbers are. If you walk out in front of your house and you look left and you look right and you look down the street, literally one in every four of those houses is a dangerous place for children, okay? One in every four women on the planet have been a victim of sexual violence as a child, as a child, okay? Now for men, it's smaller. It's one out of every five, 20% at some time in their life. However, of those, 25% of them, literally 200 million men on this planet, it happened under the age of 10 years old, okay? So here's what's happening. Of them, two thirds of them, they're like yourself, they and others like my, you know, so many people who have dealt with this trauma, whether it's sexual or physical or verbal abuse or whatever, of all of this stuff that we've been dealing with as children, two thirds of them grow up and are able to work through it. Be a good husband, be a good father, be a good mother and, and, and work through it. However, one third of people who were victimized as children, one third of them become contact offenders themselves. Good grief. Okay, now here's the crazy thing. Many of them don't even know that they were abused. The average age of somebody who, who either remembers or for the first time verbalizes that they were abused as a child, the average age is 52 years old. That's my age. Wow. Okay, my kids are grown. I've got grandkids, right? And so if, if somebody holds on to that trauma throughout that entire adult lifetime, how much of that trauma potentially is being passed on? Passed on in maybe not sexual abuse, but in anger issues and low self-esteem and anxiety and PTSD or whatever that we don't understand all this emotional crap we're dealing with. And hurt people hurt other people. And so, so as, I, as I understood how massive that number was and realized how many children are victims of sexual abuse at some time in their life as, as children and where that abuse is coming from, I've realized that it's not just some random guy that decides he's going to go to Columbia and, and do something horrible with a child. Chances are he's already done something horrible with a child in Good his own God, home, in his own man. neighborhood, right? And those are the things that we're not talking about. And so as we're coming back, this is why my new slogan is not just eradicate child trafficking. Yes, that's still my goal. But my goal is not just to pull a, a 10-year-old out of the clutches of a trafficker in Honduras. My goal is to help heal the 10-year-old inside of every 20, 30, 40, 50-year-old man or woman to literally liberate humanity to help us shed that trauma before it ever gets passed on to another person. My people ask me all the time, they say, Paul, how could you go all those times, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of meetings face to face with child traffickers and not have them see the anger in your eyes? And, and my answer surprises them. I say, I actually feel bad for them. How can you feel bad for them? They're, they're selling you a child. No, I, I will do everything in my power to ensure they never, ever hurt another child again. Wow. But more than anything, I wish I had a time machine and I could go back a year, five years, 10 years. And, and, and before they ever, ever pass that trauma on, if we could do that and help them heal, we would save millions of children. So with that in mind, you know, once they've crossed that line, they've crossed that line, go to jail. But what if we could help people before they ever get there? That's the goal. Dude, I, I, the last time I had you on a live stream, you left me speechless and here I am again. I, I'm, and, and we have a lot of people watching. It says 98 people right now. Everybody watching two things I want to talk about. Um, number one, there's a QR code right at the top. We're over a hundred now. Um, there's a QR code. Scan that and go get a ticket. I went today. 
I don't do movie theaters very well, Paul. <laughs> so I'm not sure I'll make it to a theater. Plus I'm buried in appointments, but um, I bought four tickets in the pay it forward program today. Um, and you can, anybody could go do that. It's like, it's nothing. It's like $15 a ticket. Um, and I thought, you know what? If I can't make it, let me, and my wife came in earlier. She's like, we're going to see that movie. So I'm probably going to go see it soon, but, um, it, take, take it, a box of tissues. Uh, see, I don't, uh, <laughs> I, know. I, I have, have to have a box of tissues close by when I'm talking to you, dude, <laughs> let alone go to a dang movie and watch this stuff. <laughs> Jeez. So, so. You know, number one, um, what you're, I, I, I want to know, okay, so life is going great for you. I'm going back to 2017. Life is going great. You're making, I'm assuming millions and millions of dollars. You would have to be in a $40 billion fund. <laughs> um, and actually it was 2013 when I met Tim, 2017 oh, right. when I retired. Right. Okay. So you <laughs> retire, you're like, let me give up this life of luxury and go put on some camo and go to Columbia and risk <laughs> my life. Um, like that is a huge shift, man. I mean, it's a huge shift. I don't think you could get Bill Gates to do that. Um, I don't think you could get a lot of people to do that. And we're live on Twitter right now too. Maybe Elon will see this. Hey, Elon, <laughs> would you do that? Um, so hey, um, he'll jump in. He'll jump in and do a cage fight. He's kind of a badass. <laughs> I know. Well, he. I saw him. He's uh, who Beazel? Is that how you say his name? Vin Diesel. Jim, the guy that is in the movie. Jim, oh, Jim Caviezel. Yeah. Caviezel. Uh -huh. So Elon posted, Hey, let's show the movie on Twitter. You know? Yeah. So, um, he's definitely, y'all have his attention for sure. Um, but how do you, where's the shift occur in your mind where you were like, I'm giving it all up and going and doing this. I'll tell you two, two answers. First one, the day that I got the phone call asking me to come to Columbia. Okay. From, I'm from giving you home. full screen, by the way. Yeah. So the day I got that phone call, I had one of my business partners there in the room. We were, we were out in, uh, in Atlanta, Georgia at the time at a big conference, uh, raising billions for the fund. And uh, evidently he called John, my, my, the co-founder of the fund, my regional partner. And John calls me on the phone and he goes, Paul, uh, Don told me what you're thinking of doing. He said, he said, have you, have you thought this through? He said, this is really dangerous, Paul. And, uh, I said, <laughs> I said, he said, you're set. You could, you could sell out today. You could buy an Island and be happy the rest of your life. And my answer back to him was this. I said, John, would I really be happy? If I bought an island, if I bought a jet, if I you know, bought another jet, if I bought a yacht, whatever. But it, would that make me happy? I said, and if I was doing something else dangerous tomorrow, if I was uh, climbing, uh, climbing Kilimanjaro, climbing Everest, that's even more dangerous. I climbed Kili. That wasn't too bad. So climbing Everest tomorrow, would, would we have that same conversation, wouldn't we? He goes, yeah, we, we probably would. I said, and when I'm 95 years old and I'm looking back on my life, and I say, I climbed this mountain and I helped build this multi-billion dollar company. And I helped rescue this many children from slavery. Which of them matters at all? I said, if my skill sets and my background can be instrumental in any way to help bring those children back to their families. Wow. I have to go. Mm. And he said, yeah, Paul, you do. And then fast forward, you know, I went down on that one. We set everything up. And then two weeks later, I was down there two days later, but then I told the traffickers come back in two weeks. And we, that's when the sting happened. And the moment that changed my life forever was when I was sitting there. And in the movie, this little girl's name is, is Rocio. 
we named her Rocio because my, my wife at the time was named Rocio, right? And so, but, but the traffickers called her princess. That's when they, they showed her picture on the phone on that first, uh, that first mission down there. And they were promoting her as this little 11 year old virgin. Oh, and and at, the party, at the party, when these guys brought 54 children and we put them in a separate part of the house and halfway through this negotiation with them, one of them stands up. His name was actually Eduardo. The, the same guy name is the guy who plays me in the movie. But this trafficker was named Eduardo and he stands up and he says, Pablo, I have to show you the gifts that I brought you. And he goes in the house where the children were. He was in there for about 10 minutes. And while he was in there, you could hear some of the children crying. There was a kind of a grass uh, roof on it. So you can hear what's inside. He's, you could hear some of the children crying while he was in there. Oh my God. Finally, he comes out and he has four virgins. So scared, Ken. These kids were, so, they were so scared. And everything in my body wanted to just hug these kids and say, you're going to be fine. You're going to see your parents again. And, I, and I, I couldn't say that. We were undercover still. The agents hadn't come. And, and there was one little boy. He was 11 years old. Mm. I believe they abducted him from Haiti. They gave him cocaine that morning because he was so scared it was going to hurt. What kind of fucked up, effed up monster thinks that that's attractive? You know? I was so glad it was us there and not some monster. And, and th they brought this little 11-year-old, stood her right in front of me. And I'm sitting on a chair, and she's standing up. And I'm looking into her eyes. And she was shaking. And her eyes were filled with fear because she thought she was looking at the man who's going to defile her. And so badly, I wanted to say, no, I'm not that guy. Her hands were shaking. I, I took her hands and I, I said, I said, como se llama? What's your name? She didn't answer. She did. It's probably because she, she's trying to figure out what she should say. Cause I'm sure her real name wasn't princess. And, and I, I said, it's the beginning. It's okay. And that was the hardest moment of my life. And at that second in time, looking at that little girl, I made a solemn covenant promise to myself, to God, and to that little girl that I would do everything in my power to eradicate that from the face of the earth. Because there was nothing I could think of that was worse. Nothing. And, and then after the agents came, stormed the party, arrested all of us, child protective services people came in with the children. They took the, the traffickers away in handcuffs. And I, I had to go to the bathroom and there was an outside bathroom and a little area that some of our things were. And I, I went into this area and there was a grass roof that covered the whole house area. And as I walked in there, I could hear the Child Protective Services people with the children, calming them down, and they were laughing with them and little songs with them. And one of the operators named Scott helped fund the mission as well. He, he was standing there next to me, and I was bawling. And I said, Scott, you hear that? That is the sound of freedom. And so fast forward, we wow. needed to take this story. Now in the movie, there's a jungle scene later that didn't happen as part of that operation. We, that the little girl they were looking for was there. She was standing there in front of me, but we did take other missions and put them all together in the story. And those things really did happen. Wow. I actually have pictures of me and scrubs going into the jungle area as a doctor. And, uh, and, and finding these, these traffickers that were in there. That's a whole other story by itself. 
lots wow. of good men and women helping, but, but in the, um, wow, <laughs> dude, I, I, God bless you, dude. I mean, seriously, you're, you're, um, so many people say they, they, <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. They talk a big game. Um, but man, when it comes to <clears throat> doing, they, they'd rather watch it on their, their television than to actually go to Columbia and do what you've done and, and well, the other people. And then understand this. <clears throat> most people shouldn't. <laughs> right. <to> Columbia, <laughs> right? right. I have, I have a special set of skills from a, from a previous life that makes me somewhat safe in a dangerous place. Right. I mean, the, the, <laughs> my, 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 my bodyguards who picked me up when I first went down there are, uh, one of them, from from what I was told, I haven't verified this, but he was in uh, in the Navy SEALs. If you, the guy who replaced Chris Kyle in real life, or I don't know if it was that division, but he was he he was like one of the top snipers in in uh, in that division. So these are like badass dudes. You yeah. Know? There was a there was a guy by the name of Dave that uh, one of my best friends. He's a Navy SEAL. He now has a, an amazing foundation that he averages about one pedophile a day that he takes down. And uh, and realize this, every single time that he takes down a pedophile, that represents about 100 children that would have been abused. So he's saving about 100 kids a day. Wow. It's amazing what some of these heroes are really. These are unsung heroes that aren't in the movie at all. I... I, I and I, I know your heart, so you're you're probably not going to want to hear what I'm getting ready to say. Um, I, I saw this video on Twitter last night. Don't know why, just came up in my feed, um, and it was it was a guy in um, I want to say Saudi Arabia or maybe in uh, one of those the the Middle Eastern countries, Dubai. Um, had raped a five-year-old and they took him to the public square, laid him down and, and ended his life right there. And they should, Ken, don't I've, get me wrong. Okay. I don't get me wrong. They should. <clears throat> okay. You rape a five-year-old, you're wasting my oxygen. Right? Amen. Done, done. Amen. But my compassion comes in wondering how the Hell, they got to that point. Right. And if we're really going to fix this problem back up 20 years and help people heal. Well, if you've crossed that line, if you cross that line, done. Right. Done. done. And, and uh, um, now I will say this, you know, I've said this before and I got a lot of heat from it on, uh, on some of my social media. If uh, you put me in a, in a, in a prison and, you're, uh, and you've got a hundred pedophiles and a hundred traffickers and you say, Paul, you can have a gun or you can have a microphone. I'd be really tempted to have that gun. Right. And just, <laughs> you just said that you said that on my show. Yeah. I'd, I'd be <laughs> what really you're getting tempted, ready to say, go ahead. Really tempted to have that gun. But at the same time, I have to believe, I yeah. have to believe that, 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 that this life somehow could serve a purpose for that F tard. This is what I call these guys. I, I say it all out. I can't say it online. I mean, they're F tards, right? And 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 hopefully in that purpose, they they can die with some degree of remorse. And so I might say, hey, can I take that gun in an hour, but give me the microphone first? And and I would take them into the pit of hell. Into the pit of hell. Mm. I would, I would, I would show them the depravity of what they're doing. I would walk them through the stories of the children and, and, and the situations that they were in because of guys like them. Yeah. Then at the end, yeah, they're wasting my oxygen. Right. I, I, so, I, yeah, I live in Texas, man. They, the, the grand jury would not indict this guy that he found some dude took his little girl out into the woods and hadn't done it yet but was getting ready to 
he runs out into the woods and literally beat the dude to death. Good. <laughs> like, and, 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 and he should be applauded for that. <laughs> I like, there's no, I don't, if they've, if, if they've crossed the line, is there, what's the point of trying to rehabilitate somebody like that? I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, the, the bottom line is you, you take innocence in that way. It is worse than murder. I it agree, is worse man. than murder. I mean, I murder, you're, you're taking a life. They're, they're done and gone. You rape a child. Mm. They're dealing with that shit for their whole life, their whole life. Yeah. It's, it's and, and, and so, so yeah, I have, I have no, I have no tolerance, but what, but my, my point is, my point is, can we, are there people today? And I know there are, there are hundreds of millions of people today who, if we don't do anything, will end up raping children in the future. Okay. So the key is if, 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 if somebody has dealt with that childhood trauma and they're part of that one third that hasn't figured out their crap and become a good person and, 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 and works through it, can we take them and say, okay, before you ever pass that trauma on, before you ever think about laying a hand on somebody else or verbally abusing them or even worse, can we figure out how to help you shed that trauma? Can we help you heal in some way? Because I can be compassionate for that guy. Yeah. Because he's dealt with a lot of crap, right? So let's let's liberate humanity from that standpoint. But the rest of them, yeah, there's it's it's kind of like this. I um I can remove a rat from my kitchen and I can do it from a place of compassion, right? He chose to be a rat right? He's bringing disease into my house. And, and I can, I, I'm not going to, Oh, let's still take you out. Let's make you a little hut in the corner. No, no, you're a freaking rat, right? Done. Right. You're done in my house. You chose the wrong house right. with the wrong disease in the wrong body. You're done. Right? right. And so as we move forward, we have to cleanse the earth. We do. The, we have to cleanse it of the people and the energy that are creating this problem. So yeah, I, I, I applaud those guys in Saudi Arabia, take them in the middle of the square, make it a, make it a point that whoever crosses that line gets dealt with. Zena says love is justice and peace. Yeah, I, I agree. I, so, so Paul, the, um, here, I'm going to throw you one out of left field. You ready? Yep. <laughs> You're like, I can't, I, there's nothing I could throw at you that you couldn't bring handle. it. <laughs> he said, bring it. There's, I've heard all of these conspiracies. I, and I guess if it's true, it's not really a conspiracy. Um, of extremely wealthy people that get off on this stuff that, that participate in this stuff. Um, is there truth behind what I've heard? Is there that truth? is a one hundred percent yes. Now, if you if you were to ask me, hey, is there is there truth to these tunnel systems? Is there truth to the adrenochrome thing? Is there truth to people wearing kids' faces on their face? All this stuff. If I haven't verified it and seen it, then I'm not going to say, yeah, there's truth there. What I will say is, I have every single time undercover. The reason why I was recruited is because that's the profile that these traffickers are looking for. Because those are the guys who do it. It's, it's guys with really big egos and really big checkbooks and lots of trauma that was unresolved that, that have done everything else in their life and effed everybody else in their life and whatever. And they're trying to find some sort of new excitement and they're addicted to super horrible things. And they've, they've taken a woman from a divine feminine to an object and continue down that dark road. All of this stuff. But the answer is absolutely yes. Wow. Because, because you know, you've heard the you've heard the the quote with power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Well, yep. there's a lot of people that in their own mind and in their own checkbook have a degree of absolute power. 
that has the ability to corrupt absolutely. And, and if they don't find a clear foundation in their life and a connection with God, I'm, you know, I'm not making this religious, I'm making it spiritual. If they don't have that solid foundation, then it's easy for them to allow their ego to lead, their pride, their, their arrogance to get into a place where they think it's okay to hurt somebody else. If they've already crossed a bunch of other lines where they think it's okay to F you in business, and they're okay to F their ex-wife in this way and cheating on her and F all of these F and other people. Why does it matter if they go F a child, right? Because uh, they've, yeah. al they've, already, they've already slowly taken those steps of dehumanizing other people. And so that's the road that we need to help humanity as a whole as we're, as we're elevating the consciousness of humanity. It starts with helping us check our ego and check that that arrogance and that pride that's taking people down that dark road. And so the answer is yes and and let me touch on this. Now, this is this is based on some lots of information, lots of studying. Yeah. I'm going to just ask your listeners a question. They can ask themselves this question. Why do you think we have not received the full list of everybody who's been on Jeffrey Epstein's plane into his island. Why? Why? I know. I, okay. I, Here, I, let I, me tell you this. Okay. I, I went through some training years ago. Uh, a CIA agent did a bunch of training with us. Uh, this is even before I was involved in this, probably one of the reasons I was involved. But in this training, he showed me this book. It's called the CIA's Book of Dirty Tricks, right? And he said, I'm telling you, this is how pressure is put on people. This is, this is what we do. And these were dirty tricks. And so here's the thing. If you are super dark and super powerful and super just a low life F, but you're, you're running the show, which some of these, the, the politicians that you know aren't running the show. There's people behind the scenes that are behind yeah. it, right? Yeah. And if your goal, is to control somebody's vote, a senator, a congressman, a judge, uh, uh, or, or their direction of the country or the state as a whole. If your goal is to control them, if you have a video, if you have absolute proof of them crossing that line, right? 17 year old. Oh, she wasn't 17, she was 14. Oh, she was a 14, she was 12, right? And and if you have, if you've you've already been with a 17-year-old, hey, guess what? We have a 14. Hey, look at these ones, right? You get them into that kind of a situation and you Gee. get dirt on them, you control their vote forever. And wow. why would you want, see if if that whole list was brought out and those guys were removed from office by us because we'd vote them out, right? right? If those guys were removed from office because that list was out, now they have to corrupt a whole new group of people in order to control them. It's better for them that they keep the people in office that they can control. That's the answer to that riddle. So <clears throat> let me ask this as a follow-up. We're talking about people with access to billions of dollars bill in some cases even more trillions yeah. yeah um if that's the case if that's true and i believe it is how do we deal with that how 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 do we um how do we <laughs> how do I mean, we fix that yeah i mean the, you're one, be the biggest i mean you, the, you're you're talking about taking on the biggest of the big yeah no the biggest of the bigs on our side we just forget it oh that's right I, I I was getting ready to say a minute ago. By the way, oh now you're gonna bring God into the picture. Okay. No, seriously so, though, that is I, that is the answer to that. Is is and here's the thing: almost every religion on earth has prophesied a a, a massive uproar and wars and all of this stuff before a thousand years of peace, right? 
Yeah. Well, God's not going to come and flip his fingers and say, okay, now everybody nice to each other and have a thousand years of peace. There has to be something that's going on in terms of the grassroots movement of good people rising up together and saying, not on my watch. The answer to that, how we win, is the exact same way that the sound of freedom finally became released. Understand that we had that film finished in before COVID. We tried in 2017, 18 to start taking it out to the market. COVID hit, but we, but, but even before that, it was ready to go. And we were denied, denied, denied. Now this, when you see it, you'll realize this will be one of your favorite films of all times. So I'm, not I'm not just saying that because I'm the executive produ an executive producer. I'm saying that when you see it, you will walk away and say, that was one of my favorites of all time. And, and everybody who watches it says that. But the problem is we took it into all of these big Hollywood people. We had money that was there from Fox News. But as soon as Fox got bought out by Disney, boom, dropped. Oh, wow. Does Disney not want us to have this film out? I wonder why not, right? And then, okay, and, and then, and then you start having all these other big distributors. You know, Amazon, even Netflix, all these guys, they're like, no, no. And, they, and when you understand that the real mafia is not the guys selling drugs in Mexico, the real mafia are the guys who are running Main Street media and, and, and the big social media stuff. And it might not even be the guys that you know. It's the guys behind the guys behind the guys, right? Yeah. And the real decision makers are, are pushing this agenda that that is corrupting your children. This agenda that's making them feel like it's okay to have their genitals mutilated at a young age. That's making them think that it's okay to go to a parade in New York where grown men dressed as women are naked. Really, okay? This kind of a society, this agenda that's being pushed by people who do not want you to live in love and light and peace, were the same ones that were putting a stop to this movie coming out. And how did it finally come out? Angel Studios happens to have a grassroots system where it's no Hollywood money behind it. It's people like you, Ken, who step forward and say, you know what, I'm going to buy four tickets or five tickets. I'm going to donate those so that other people can go see this film. That's what has pushed the million tickets that have been pre-sold already. We're the number one pre-sale in the country. We're, we're beating out Indiana Jones. It's amazing yeah. what's happening without the help of all of those guys with agendas. It's yeah. us. It's good people rising up and creating a movement. That's what's making the difference here. And Dude, that's how we're going to win this war. This has got to be our last live stream for a while because I cannot handle being this emotional. <laughs> Like what the heck? No, I, I, I mean, honestly, I have this just pissed off feeling in my chest, man. Like, nah, I don't feel it that way. See, uh, we're going to well, win. It's not that. I don't know, but I, I am very, we're going to win. It, yes. Yes. It, it's supposed to make you mad. It's, and this movie will make you mad and it's supposed to, so that you can have that same commitment that I had when I was sitting in front of that little 11 year old seeing her shaking and scared so that you can say, you know what? Boom. Not on my watch. We're going to, we're going to rock this. We're going to win this war. And, let's, and let's show everybody the trailer you want to. Yeah. Yeah. Show them the trailer. Yeah. It's, only, uh, it's the condensed version minute, a minute <laughs> and 22 seconds. But um, I'd like to know if everybody that wants to see the trailer real quick, drop a one in the comments for me. So I'll know if, if we have interest in it. Um, my wife is on here. The American people are waking up to the corruption. It is the people who are going to contribute to the change. I, I, yeah. I totally agree. Um, so check out the, we're getting a bunch of ones. Let's, let's, let's show everybody the trailer, Paul. Um, this is the trailer to the F sound of freedom and um, ah, the, Lump. The, I have a lump in my throat. I need to go get checked. <laughs> it, just, it just happened. Oh Lord, have mercy. Here we go. Let's let's um let's watch this. Paul, hang tight here. Here we go.
tú rescatas niños, ¿verdad? Quizá puedas ayudarme a encontrar a mi hermana. Imagine walking into a room right now, seeing an empty bed. What will we do? Children stars drift around in the sky. We're Homeland Security. You know we can't go off rescuing kids in Colombia. I like this job tears you to pieces. This is my one chance to put those pieces back together. We're talking about extracting an 11-year-old girl from an army of rebels. Not just her. I'm talking about rescuing hundreds of kids. She could be a block down the road, or she could be in Moscow, Bangkok, L.A. Over two million children a year are being sucked into the deepest recesses of hell. We do nothing. Someday it's gonna reach the likes of you. What if this was your daughter? Wow. It wow, was wow, wow. the film is really well done. It's a it's a dark subject, but there's so much light with the rescue of the kids and uh, getting them back to their families. Paul, I love you, man. You're you're an amazing human being, and Thank I am you. so grateful to call you a friend and to to have you on again tonight um it it opened it looks like it opened today here in the dallas area yeah and a lot of cities going already today it wasn't supposed to open until the fourth but we have all sold out theaters on so many places that they uh, a lot of them started opening early so it's beautiful amazing 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 and and eric Hold on, I, I'm, the comments are moving so fast. Right there, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Amen. Yeah, yeah. dude, you're awesome. I, I am so um, so grateful. Gosh, I, I, there's not a whole lot left to be said except for scan okay. that QR code right there. And and that'll take you right over to the ticket. Um, oh, there's Hua. You know Hua, don't you? I, do. I love her and Jaime. Soul. Oh, they're amazing. Amazing. Um, so listen, um, everybody watching, go to all you have to do is Google it. If that QR code doesn't work for you, just Google it. The Sound of Freedom movie. It'll take you right over to Angel. It's angel.com is the website address. If somebody wants to type that into the comments, angel.com. Um, <clears throat> mm, trying to say this without choking up, man. Um, I, I love you, Ken. You're such a good man with a good heart. And you having me on your show a number of months ago, opened up the floodgates because I, I hadn't shared publicly at all. And I'm just super grateful to you and your big heart and you uh, uh, encouraging me to share the stories far and wide that we could make a positive impact in the world. I'm grateful to you, man. I'm, I'm uh, locking arms with you, brother. I'm, I'm, I'm in let's, I have, I have a special set of skills too. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just playing. I tell you though, I wouldn't mind. Uh, anyway, we won't go there, but listen. There, there's, I, a, there's a man your group should uh, take a look at online. A dear friend of mine, Steve Tarani. And a uh, wonderful man. One of the top edged weapons trainers on the planet. He actually trains CIA, FBI, and others before they go out on improvised weapons training, edge weapons training. I, uh, I did two full days with him 
years ago and then uh, and then hired him to do private training for another four days straight flew him into utah just to work out in our gym and train with some of our teams so anyway so yeah if you've got an edge weapon you want to really know how to use it steve, <laughs> steve Trani's the guy <laughs> yeah well i may i may have other other forms that you know anyway um, <laughs> So listen, man, what you are, um, what you're doing is absolutely unbelievable, man. I'm so grateful for you, the children across this planet. And, and, and here's, here's another number that is staggering. Um, and please correct me if I'm wrong, Paul, um, 2 million children a year, a year, 2 million. Yeah, are being brought into it. The total number of children is much higher, but he says sucked into the deepest recesses of hell. That's his quote on the movie, because that's approximately how many are being brought in. Now others are aging out or are, are uh, getting rescued, or but it's it's a it's a scary it number is, and it it's scary. super sad. But yeah. yeah, we we've got we've got the biggest of the big guys on our side. That's right. And the big, big guy. Oh, what I was going to say is we currently right now have 164 live viewers. We were up to 200 and something at one point. Um, I'm just going to tell you that this is a record for me. That's awesome. Live streams. And now it's thundering. Um, mm -hmm. This is a record. God's hand is in on this because literally I've never had that many live viewers at one time. So um, I'm completely blown away and thankful to um, I've got people texting me that have shows that want to have you on. So yeah, in fact, that's something that I would love your help with is I can, I'm, I can do podcasts two or three times a day. I, I want to share. I want to talk. I want to inspire. So Yes, if there's any stages I can speak on, and and I want to do a shout out to uh, to Bill Walsh. Bill is so Bill, amazing. Bill is technically the reason. If you go back, you were the very first podcast that I did, but Bill put me on the very first stage, wow. and started sharing. I was hundred percent undercover, not sharing it anywhere until Bill. Um, came into my life and he said, Paul, he said, this story needs to be shown and shared. And so many good people through his connections have, uh, it's just, just flowered out into so many good people that have opened up doors. So, so uh, he's, I, he's a good man. I just talked to, and I love Bill. He's a friend of mine as well. Um, I just talked to another friend of mine prior to coming on with you, James Whitaker. If you're watching, um, James is the producer of um the think and grow rich movie he's oh yeah he's a pretty big deal man um and they, and he wants an introduction i to would you. love that i was i was asked um uh, by some of the guys i think it was some shin uh, um I forgot his first name anyway John. and and some others who who are doing the think and grow rich tour for this next year that yeah. wanted to have me come on and and uh be a speaker jackson i said you don't you don't know jackson do you i gave jackson a huge hug the other day he's i he's, love uh, that dude he's got, he's got a heart bigger than his body and that's something because he's a I, big dude I, I said, I said, I don't know how you even got into the NFL. You're such a little fella. <laughs> <laughs> He's, I give him, he could just like go like that and just crush me. And <laughs> he, but he would never, he's just a good dude. I love he's that guy. Such a good man. <laughs> he's amazing. Oh man. So, um, wow. Wow. So I don't know who Facebook user is, but thank you for being here. Um, thank you to everyone who shared this out, who's been on here. Um, if you haven't shared it out, please share this out. The whole world needs to hear about this. Paul, I, I don't know how we go further from here, but we're going to. I want to help. I want to do everything okay. I can. So but Connect me with any of those guys who have podcasts. If they've got They've got yeah. audiences and people, then I would. Yeah. Yep. So. All right. 
Well, everybody, make sure you follow Paul. Go to paulhutchinson.com. Paul Hutchinson official. Paul official, Hutchinson.com is some chiropractor, but uh, right. Paul Hutchinson official, or you can follow me on liberating dash humanity on my IG or Facebook or all of those, or, or go to liberateachild.org or liberate a child or, or liberate children.org, either one of those. And you can get some great information and, and, and help with our cause. You're amazing, man. Thank you. I really appreciate yeah. you. Everybody. Thank you. Have an amazing night. Go watch the movie. Go get your tickets, go buy tickets. There's literally a button at angel.com where you can pay it forward, buy some tickets for other people. Let's, let's get 2 million people to this. That's the goal. And they're, they're, this thing's outselling every other movie in the, in the country right now. It's crazy. Yeah, Yeah, it is. It's crazy. So there is um, my wife. Um, Zena has a, a a great show. I'm going to connect you with her. She's amazing. So um, thank you, Jill, for putting that up. Thank you to everybody. I'm going to end the live stream now. Paul, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Thanks again. Appreciate you, buddy.